Hey guys, this is Matt, and I'm back with part two of our tower defense series, where we're going to learn how to interface with our map. Uh, so, if last time we learned how to create this grid, uh, today we are going to talk about how, t how we're placing these turrets and how we know uh, when we can place one and when we can't. So, if you notice, you can't place one in the middle uh, of this row here. You also can't do it at the ends. So let's go and take a look at what we're doing. First, we're going to go into the event handler where we get all of our clicks that the player uh, gives us, all of the, uh, all the user input. So whenever we left click, we're going to get the mouse position. And we are going to uh, then find the cursor on node by calling get node from location. We get there going through our uh, object manager and then getting our map reference. And we are going to send it our screen to world point and our mouse position. So let's go into get node from location. This is really the most difficult part. Uh, so we have our vector three location. First, we're going to get our x index. And to get our x index, we subtract our location.x minus the left, uh, left transform dot position dot x. And the left transform, if you remember, is just the left bounds of our map. So right over here. It, it gets set at the beginning of the game. Uh, you can go back to uh, tutorial part one where I talk more about that. So we're going to subtract those two x positions and then divide it by our overall node size in the x direction. Then take the floor of that and cast it to an int. That gives us our x. So z is about the same thing. Take the uh, dot z of our location and the dot z of our left transform and then divide it by the uh, y length of our node size. Then take the floor, cast it to an int, and we need to invert the z, so we are going to add it to our uh, overall size of the map in the z direction. Now we need to check for out-of-bounds conditions of our indexes. So our x, if our x index is uh, greater than or equal to the overall size in the x direction of our array, we're going to go ahead and set it to the maximum index, which is size minus one. Uh, also, if it's uh, if the x in index is less than zero, we're going to go ahead and set it to zero. Uh, about the same thing for the z. Then we just use those indexes into our 2D array of nodes and return our node to the player. Not to the player, but to the update method. So now we have the node that the player clicked on. The next thing we need to do is figure out if we're allowed to build on that node. So we're going to go through the object manager again, go, to the, go back to the map, and uh, call block node, and we're going to give it the cursor that we just got. So let's go into block node, and this is going to return true if you're allowed to build uh, on this node and false if you're not allowed to. So if, uh, if you're not allowed to build on the node, if the node is not buildable, you're going to return false. Uh, else we are going to set is walkable to false and is buildable to false. Is walkable lets the unit walk on the tile and is buildable lets you build on it. So if that was the case, we're going to return true and go back to the event handler. Now we, we know if we can build there. So, uh, we need to then make sure that uh, the location that we're building in doesn't block in any enemies, and it also doesn't uh, block the spawning position from the destination position. So we're going to go to check and update paths. Here we're going to get our destination by uh, using the get node from location uh, method again, and we are going to get our destination transform dot position, and that again is another uh, 
is another transform on our map. We call it enemy spawn here. So we get our spawning position and uh, cast that to a node. Uh, our path to destination is a list of nodes. That's what makes up a path in our game. So we're going to update this path by calling our A star algorithm. And I have another algorithm on, uh, our, I have another tutorial dedicated to uh, the A star pathfinding algorithm, if you want to take a look at that. I'll also be going into another tutorial, part three, about how to do uh, some unit movement where I'll gloss over some A star pathfinding. But, so we call our A star pathfinding. We're going to uh, get the spawning position of our enemy, cast it to a node. That's our starting position. Then we're going to send it the destination. And from there, we're going to either get back a valid path or we're going to get back null. If we got back null, return false. If we didn't, then do the same things for all the enemies in, uh, uh, do the same thing for all the enemies on the map, update their paths. If the path is null, then return false. If you got through all of that and you didn't return false, return true. So now let's say uh, you didn't block and you didn't block any enemies, so that's true, and you're allowed to build there. So we're going to get a uh, we're going to make a new vector called corrected position. This is going to be the position that we're spawning our turret in, and it's going to be the cursor on node unity position. Now we're going to correct the dot y coordinate of this uh, of the unity position because we want our objects to uh, layer on top of each other. We want the ones uh, closest to us to be to look like they're in front of the other towers. Unity doesn't handle that very well so this is going to do this for us. And we do it by getting the list index of our cursor on node, the z value, and then dividing it by the overall size of the map in the z direction and then negating it. This is going to create a layering effect. And we're probably going to do about the same thing to layer the enemies while they're uh, walking through the maze. And finally, we're going to instantiate a standard turret. We're just, we only have one turret right now, so that's all we're going to do. We're going to send it our corrected position and then also a uh, quaternion value. If you weren't allowed to build, one of these was false, then we're going to unblock our node, which simply set is walkable to true, is buildable to true, and then we're going to update our null paths. So if we got to here, then check and update paths, set someone's path to null. So we want to go into here uh, if our path to destination was null, then do our pathfinding again and give it, a give it a value. And then we want to go through our enemies and do the same thing. Set path, A star algorithm. Alright, so that's about it. Uh, again, I'll be making another tutorial about unit movement. Uh, so thanks for watching.